Hi everybody, it's Lynn from Lynn's Crash Designs. Welcome to Mixed Media Monday. I have got... I have got some stuff ready today. I've got a couple of strips of just some, let's say, cereal box. It's actually advertising box, but a brown paper bag that I've cut the bottom out and then I've cut up the seam in the back spread it out and then I've crumpled it up like you did back in school where I really tried okay it's not to make it as soft as toilet paper but I really really crumpled it I've got the Sun and Moon from previous Mixed Media Monday I don't I mean previous Thursday's polymer clay. I don't even know how long it's been. A little... I think this is paper clay. Um, it's a moon from the stars and moon mold. Which is a Prima mold, by the way. Um, it was available just about everywhere at the craft stores, but I'm not sure now. It sells out pretty quick. And then this is just a, um, uh-huh, a notebook from the dollar store. It's, it's just a school notebook. Okay, so I'm going to cover the notebook with the brown paper. And then I'll go from there. <laughs> Okay, I've just got some of the Americana, which means it's deco art. It's the deco page matte. And I really like this stuff. So, I'm going to actually start on the back. really I'm really trying not to let it seep under the edge on a book this large you really gotta work fast all right
Okay, because I don't have one of those cool rollers. I've just got a gift card or whatever. Pretty flimsy one at that. Alright, so I'm just gonna let this dry a little bit, tack a little bit, whatever you want to call it. I did not um, attempt to glue the spine this time. I will go back and do that in a secondary step. Alright, so just hold it down <laughs> till it dries. You can um, put the decoupage on a little thicker and then just wait a minute for it to get tacky. But here in Texas, of course, it's normally really dry. So, although we're in the middle of one of the wettest springs we've ever had so I'll be back okay now this time I've already flipped it over and done the spine on the other side but this time I will paint the entire thing and no matter how many times I told myself To turn this over so the printing would be on the inside somehow it's still on the outside but that won't matter because we're gonna uh, paint it with some black gesso and the one, one of the things I forgot to tell you is I'm not trying to get rid of the wrinkles. I want the wrinkles. Okay. Now, just doing the same thing. Just gonna make sure it's got good contact. And then flip it over and let it dry. Now I do want to spread it out so that the wrinkles do lay as flat as possible. Alright. Okay, I'll be back. Alright, now <clears throat> excuse me. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna cut down the selvage over here. about I'm just gonna let it hang over about an inch for a fold over okay something like that Sorry about that. I can't seem to stay in camera when I'm when I'm cutting. Huh?
Okay, now all I did was round the corners to match the rounded corners of the book and clip the corners at the spine because the spine is stitched so there's no way to um, cover the book otherwise. So I'm going to deal with the corners first and I do want to leave that extra bit just to maintain those rounded corners just a bit. The reason I'm doing the folded over is because I'm going to put some I'm going to put some pattern paper for the end pages for the for the for the extra. All right. So, I'll just do the book corner something like that. I'm not really worried about the extra bulk in the corners. It won't be much. So, I'm going to just do a dry fit and then I'll come back and glue it. Okay, starting with the ends. I'm going to I'm going to paint the glue on the brown paper and go a little bit around the rounded corner. Pulling against the cover, I want the wrinkles to be towards the inside, not towards the fold. Okay, now sometimes you'll need to go back and add a little glue just to get the corner to really stick down. Alright, so I'll do the other edge for you. Again, Painting the glue on the brown paper. That way you'll be sure to get it all the way to the edge. Whereas if you just painted it on the cover, it would be a little harder. Alright. Just going, just painting the glue where the cover will fold over. Covered those corners are 
pretty round. Okay. I've got a little bit where I clipped the spine, but that won't matter too much. Like I said, we're going to paint it with some black gesso and then possibly put something on the spine. I'm not sure yet. Okay, now I just drew a little jaggedy line on the cardboard. What I tried to do was make the peaks where the valleys are on the other piece. Alright, just so they'll have something like this as a reveal when they're done. Now I'm going to paint the back a dark gray and I'm going to paint the front black. Alright, so I'll go ahead and cut out the other two and possibly I'll just go ahead and cut out the other two. Okay, now we've got the book here. I've already done the back up uh, rather badly, but anyway. I'm going to try to do a little galaxy in the background. So I've got the Prussian Blue Americana. Boy, this is really old. The Ocean Blue. The Spa Blue. That's a really light color. The Concord Grape. This is Apple Barrel. And the Valentine Pink. This is also Apple Barrel. I really wanted a magenta kind of color. But the only thing I have is red and pink for some reason. And then I've got um, the Snow or Titanium White. I've got my stencil brush, which is not very dry. Or very clean, evidently. Okay. So, um, I'm going to get my stuff together and I'll be right back. Okay, so what I want to do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to place my embellishments kind of about like something like that. So, I want my galaxy... Huh? I want it to kind of spiral around kind of sort of maybe hopefully <laughs> so I'm gonna start with the Prussian blue now you will not more than likely be able to see this very well because Prussian blue is a very dark Blue. So, I'm going to pounce it off on my paper towel first. So at first it's going to appear like I'm 
not really adding much. Something kind of like that. Going for kind of a one of those spiral arm galaxies. I want it to kind of fade out as I go away from the galaxy. Now, like I said, more than likely, as this dries, it will even become darker, so it will be harder to see. But remember, it's just the background. Okay. <laughs> so then I'm going to do the same thing in the ocean blue. But not uh, not going to be spreading it out quite as far. If anything, I still want the ocean blue. I mean the Prussian blue <laughs> to kind to kind of stand out <laughs> as much as as much as you can call it that. Sorry, I'm shaking the camera a bit. Okay. Okay, just with a bit of white now. It really won't be a lot different than the than the light blue, but that's only because I haven't cleaned the brush. Okay, maybe just a tad bit more.
spread out those giant drops just a bit. Okay, now I'm going to fill in just a tiny bit with the red and purple. This purple is rather old, but... It still works. Okay, I really just added just a little bit. Okay, and now for some pink. After I close the purple. <laughs> I don't want my desk to be purple. And if anybody will knock it over, it'll be me. Okay. Yeah, literally just a little bit of this pink. Okay, 
There we go. Now, it basically looks like a hot mess. But, adding the stars is what really brings it out. I don't know why I keep trying to open the white instead of just... I'm afraid to get too much white. Okay, now I'm going to take just a drop of the titanium white after I paint my thumb. And literally just a drop. Then I'm just going to take a squirt bottle of water. And I'll give it about four squirts. Mix that together really well. Then I've just got my fan brush. Alright. I'm really trying to concentrate the stars along that middle. Now I'll get some of the finer stars out, out, towards the outer space. Okay. So there we go. Now you could, if you wanted to, I'll just take my ball stylus here. And just give a little character to one of the stars. It will really make it pop that it's outer space. Okay. So now all we've got to do. Besides finish the embellishments is to paint up our mountains 
or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> Put him something like that. And then my embellishments. Alright. Okay, now I've got a flat brush. A rather soft. So that it hopefully won't leave a lot of brush strokes. So, I'm just going to give these a coat of paint. Nothing interesting. Without trying to paint myself. That will be the trick. Then I'm going to paint the number ones black. Okay, so I'll be back when this is done. I've got some of the um, ocean blue again. I've got Apple Barrel Kelly Green. I don't know why I don't have it in Americana, but some of the Persimmon. Some of the Antique Gold. And then I'm going to go ahead and use some of the Neutral Gray. Now, really and truly, all I want is a tiny bit. the green and of the blue yep I'm trying to give it some corner kind of look like it may be the earth back to the green just because I obliterated it with too much blue there we go Okay, sorry, I don't know what happened, but I painted the sun. So now I've got a, a little bit of a different brush, a little rounder brush. It's not really the one I wanted, but it's a little bit rougher. I'm going to have to pick a different one. Okay, now I've got a better one. Just 
to try to cover up where I got the orange on the moon. These paints are kind of thick, and I've chosen not to wet my brush, just because I want it to cover in one coat. Alright, I'm going to let that dry a little bit. Before I go back and add, this is some Ceramco. It's also by, no, it's by Delta. It is I don't know what kind of gray. Uh, because it's been painted over. Now, like I've said before, these paints are so old. No, these paints are so old. The Americana I just got recently. Recently, like five years ago. <laughs> Alright, so I'm just going to take a little bit of that... I'm just dabbing it off a little on a paper towel I've got over there. There we go. Okay. Now, I'll let these dry, and then I'm going to do a little bit of a black wash over the top before I even think about what I'm going to do in between the flames. So, I'll be back. Okay, I've decided to just do black. Okay, I'm going to break down and do it. Put on my better pair of eyes. Just because I don't want to paint the sun again.
Okay, sorry about that. I'd love to tell you it was camera problems, but this time it was operator error. <laughs> so I've got some of the golden polymer varnish in the matte, which is definitely my preferred matte sealer because it is truly matte. And I'm just going to coat these before I do the wash because I don't want I don't want the wash to penetrate the paint so hopefully this will do the trick really only takes a couple of minutes to dry and like I said I really love this stuff Okay, now I can do the black. Not that it will matter. <laughs> Now I'm just going to let that dry a minute. Okay. Now once again. With just a tiny drop of black. Which that was way too much. I don't know if you can see that tiny thing, but... Uh -huh. Alright. I should have gone for a bigger brush, but... Now, before it dries, I just want to pat off. 
Hey, that's what I was talking about, about it penetrating the paint. But I really didn't want it to do. On the gray, it'll be alright. Didn't really want that to happen on the sun. Okay, so I'm going to go back with the antique gold or whatever color it was called. I'm not even sure now. And um, just do a little touch up on the sun. Maybe. I can handle that. Alright, so I'll be right back. Okay. Now for the mountains. I'm gonna I'm gonna glue the black to the gray first. So you can see, I didn't glue all the way down to the bottom. Okay, I did that so that I could align the mountains together before I place it down. I've just got Aline's tacky, <clears throat> tacky glue. Because it's paper against paper. Now I want to get pretty close to the edges of these 
peaks or spikes or whatever you want to call them. I realize they're actually peaks because they're mountains, but when you're gluing, they're spikes. Okay. Just find something heavy <clears throat> to hold it down till it dries. Okay, now I'm going to glue the sun and the the sun, the moon, and the earth. Uh, I normally would use my glossy accents, but it's about empty. So I've got the crackle accents because I'm gluing polymer clay to paper. So I want something that will really hold. And this crackle accent does work pretty well. Now, of course, I could use the matte medium, but that takes a little longer to dry. And, of course, if I keep using it at this rate, I'm going to need crackle accents before too long. Okay, I'm going to go for sticking it right where the galaxy swirls. Something like that. Now, I'm just going to give that 30 minutes or so to dry, and then I'm going to take it outside and spray it with the Krylon um, gloss sealer. Now that I said that, no, I'm going to spray it with the gloss sealer. I've got a mat as well I think I'm gonna use the mat that's just what my heart is telling me I really don't want it to have a glossy finish so I'm gonna I'm gonna spray it with the Krylon mat and I gotta go outside for that <clears throat> and then I'll be back to show you the results so I'll be back Okay, here it is. <clears throat> After it's been sprayed, it's just got a couple of spots that still need to finish drying. I really, really like the way it turned out. Normally, I would have put some wax on, some metallic wax. Or some, I'm really trying to stay away from the metallics on this. So, there we go. I'm really, really liking the way it looks. Even the back. 
which I wasn't necessarily too happy with the way the galaxy painting turned out but it really looks pretty so all I need to do is find some paper to um, some papers that will match to do the inside but I don't think I have anything so I'll have to get something and um, I'll be able to use this book to do drawings and to write down maybe my upcoming projects to just keep better organization because I'm not really good at that lately so thank you so much for watching please like share and subscribe I've got my social media links are all listed below I do have an Etsy shop that has all my jewelry that I just posted <laughs> new photographs that took <gasps> took more than two weeks to photograph everything and to um, give them all names and get them uploaded so I still have about 50 to do that I will wait till next month so, anyway, bye for now.